Hi there, uh, my name is Rich White, I'm a CAD tutor at Dundee University in the School of Architecture. Uh, I'll put my glasses on so I look a bit more uh, academic, okay. So what I'd like to do is uh, just show you a little kind of uh, V&A generator that I've devised. Um, now I don't paste, I don't post many uh, grasshopper videos publicly, I usually just kind of keep them for from my students, but uh, this one's quite playful, so I thought people might like to uh, have a go at this themselves. So this is the building, um, opened a couple of years ago in Dundee. Um, Covid's kind of knocked things on the head as far as visitors go, but uh, still very popular when it was uh, open. Um, and what I've got here on the left hand side uh, are the, the kind of the basic shapes that the, the form is generated from. Um, so I've, aligned, I've lined this up so it kind of matches the, the alignment of the photograph so you can kind of acclimatise yourself or acquaint yourself with the shape. Okay, so it's, it's pretty much a square on the bottom. So uh, let me say, it's, it's basically kind of two buildings that merge together in the middle. There's a kind of a joining bit here. Okay, so the, the north side building, which is this one, um, square at the bottom pretty much, uh, and then there's a kind of a twisted zone, so you can see the kind of twist that's going on here. And then the top is a bit more rectang a bit more of a regular kind of extrusion from uh, a trapezium, a trapezoidal shape here to a slightly bigger one above it. And that basically happens on the the south building as well. Okay, let's just pull that across a little bit. Okay, so it's a bit bit more of a, an interesting shape to start off with on the bottom, and you know much more twisting that goes on on this side. Um, so I'll just show you, you know, thematically kind of what happens with the building. Okay, we've got it's a, it's a basically a big concrete lump, um, but it's been dressed up with these stone ledges, um, and so what we basically need is a kind of a contouring happening. And then just some kind of clever offsets and uh, and then solidifying of the shapes. So you know, as a concept, it's actually very 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 simple. And uh, the 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 definition, the grasshopper definition that that you can generate this with is pretty simple as well. And you know, I know you know there's lots of ways of of doing stuff with with grasshopper. What you see here, you know, you may improve on. You know. If you do, let me know. Um, I've been kind of tweaking this a bit over the years, and uh, um, I think I've got it working quite well. One of the one of the main problems you run into with uh, with this is the is the that the, the offsets don't go the right way. Um, so you may find that you need to kind of if you're going to do this with the different different shapes, you may need to kind of consider the direction that you draw the curves in initially. Uh, that can actually kind of follow all the way through into the into grasshopper okay so this is us in, in grasshopper here and I've kind of got a little kind of flattened doodle here that helps kind of orientate um, but this is generally the, the the flank of the building the, the concrete mass of the building and then outside of that we have these kind of basically triangular ledges okay so if we if we were able to contour the the, the main wall if we were able to contour this to get these position A's, so there'll be multiple position A's, okay, then offset that to get line B. If we move that downwards, you know, basically copy it downwards, we can get line C and then another offset, line D, and then it's really just a case of doing edge surfaces between these these shapes. So you're really it's a pretty, pretty simple concept. Okay, so I'll just show you the finished, the finished version of the uh, definition, so you can kind of find your way around. So we've got, you know, pulling in the shapes initially, and because there's a lot of twist between the ground floor and let's say the first floor, you can't loft that in one go because you end up with a kind of a bulbous shape. So if I just if I just demonstrate that, if we if I just add this this curve into this loft, okay. So at the moment this one this one is just going from shape one to shape two, okay. But if we add shape three into there as well, 
it ends up being kind of more bulbous, a bit like a, the hull of a boat. Okay, so that's that's why. Oops, just redone that. Let me just the cursor was in the wrong view there. Okay, so that's why it's kind of done in two bits, and then join those together, pop a lid on them. Okay. So let me just leave this on screen so you can kind of follow things through. It's, it's a bit pointless me kind of building this up. It's such a, a you know fairly simple uh, definition. It doesn't really warrant uh, you know building up bit by bit because there's not much to uh, to actually to do. Okay, so you kind of we've got a stream for one side, one building. Okay, so we do each loft separately and then join those two shapes need to put a lid on it make it solid okay and do that for the other side as well okay and then we can union those and it will get rid of the overlap area in the middle okay so we've got a cleaner mass so that effectively is something that you would bake so if you want the form there so let's let's just stick it on default Okay, so that's you got the shape of the the concrete under underneath. Just render that so we can see it. Okay. Um, next steps is to do the contouring. Okay, and I've set a start point for the contour that's half a meter above the ground. So we're saying that the first contour will be at zero comma zero comma five hundred. Okay, I've set a pretty big gap here uh, at the moment, just because it uh, you know, it slows you. The more the more the smaller the gap, the slower the uh, the uh, definition is going to run. Okay, so that gives us the initial contours, and you can't tell which direction they're going in just yet. Okay, it's not until you try and offset that you you find out which way it's it's going. Okay, now you, know, you could go straight to the offset here, but I found that doing a deconstruct at this point to to get the edges. So when you when you use deconstruct, it basically turns the turns the uh, contours of the slices into flat solids. Okay, but we can extract the edges from those and then just rejoin them together, and it seems to kind of behave a bit better if you do that. Okay, and then we get to the the kind of the looks a bit messy here, but uh, um, it's basically three sets of the same thing happening. So there's we've got an offset to get from point A, which is on the concrete, out the way. So that's the that's the distance of the the ledges from the wall, and you know in reality the the building yeah. You know, this is this has to be very carefully checked because it the way the building twists in and out you will get collisions of the the ledges with the concrete okay but in reality you know the problem areas would be kind of identified and the the ledges would be kind of veered out further at those points you know there'd be longer brackets so every, the brackets wouldn't always be exactly the same size there would be some that are longer to to account for the for the twist as the wall kind of changes shape Okay, so if we just see that that's working, we should be able to. I'm just going to get rid of that concrete because it's sitting right on top of my slider. Okay, so we're seeing them all going the, the outwards, which is what we want. We need to get away from the building. Okay, I'll leave it at 400. Okay, so it's offset, then shatter. Okay, and then we've got each individual line available for these edge surfaces okay so that the first one's an offset then the next step is to copy this down the way so we've got a move component okay so that using a negative Z there so if I keep both of these on at the same time we can see this is moving them downwards okay and I'm just kind of keeping these as a as a any 
as a right angle triangle so the same distance of move is used for the offset to get to point D so just to keep a bit of kind of dimensional kind of uh, consistency there okay so we've got curves here we've got curves here and then an offset using that same distance we get the third set of curves okay and already you can kind of get the impression of the of the the way the building works okay and then it's a case of surfacing from one set of shattered curves to the next so just do that three times and it builds up our triangular legs so our triangular ledges so pretty pretty simple okay so there's three things to bake there let's uh, let's join these together so we'll use brep join and I'll do one one for each will you do one for each uh, of the edge surfaces so it doesn't matter what order we take these in to be honest uh, just connect these up okay so if I all these I'll group those and let's just see what happens when we out when we bake the group okay so it appears that we've got control of everything um, so we'll bake these to the ledges layer okay and have a look here now that's not really what we need we're wanting we've got all sorts of groups within groups here and it's really pretty messy so let's just switch the the white curves off so we can delete these wrong ledges Okay, but if we flatten these, if we flatten these before they go into the into the brep join, then it makes a big difference, and we should end up with just one object in the end. So if we we'll bake that now to the ledges, okay, that's more like it. Just one object, and that kind of crazy amount of stuff. Okay, and let's just switch on the mass. Okay, see what that looks like. Rendered. We've still got the preview on there. I'll just switch the preview off for, the, for that object. Okay, so you will see in some places, you know, the ledges do start clashing. We've got a bit of a clash visible there. But as I said, you know, these would be, this is where the ledges would be set further away. So there'd be a standard ledge where things are fairly simple, but then when there's problem areas like this where there's a heck of a lot of twist, then they would increase the size of the of the, uh, of the brackets to help with that. So there you go, there's a, there's a kind of a area here where it's it's running through the wall. but the majority of the, the form is working fine. Okay, so that's uh, useful. And what I've actually got, uh, uh, no, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I do have a, a kind of a full, uh, we're taking, taking the mickey a wee bit and adding some of the other buildings in as well. Um, but uh, I'll save that for another time. Okay, hope that's been useful. Um, uh, all the best and good luck.